The night I moved to New York City, I was immediately drawn to the water. From across the river, the towers of Midtown drew a skyline that was so striking I couldn't really even form a thought for the longest time, so instead, I just took a picture. In the years since, I've been drawn back to this view of the skyline time and time again, looking out over those titans of Manhattan. To me, there's something special about seeing it from this angle. The noise and the music and the beauty and the horror is all flattened to a pretty painting on the other side of the water. Bouncing around my mind when I took that picture was the thought that across that river, among those twinkling lights, all my dreams could be made real. It was there that I would silence those who doubted me and make proud all who championed me. It was there, across the quiet water in New York City, where anything was possible. Even now as I watch from afar, that feeling of magic is still there, calling me with a promise of endless possibility and opportunity. And yet, I'm here to say goodbye. For now, anyway. The biggest thing people get wrong about New York is they think they can understand it. But the reality is, much of the experience of the city is just at odds with itself. It is simultaneously beautiful and terrible. It's wondrous and depressing. It's nothing and everything you expect it to be. New York is the entire gamut of the human experience, a city of people suffering and thriving day in and day out. And some people love it and others hate it, but I can't bring myself to pick a side. I can't look back at who I've become and the friends I've made and the things I've accomplished and say that my time here was wasted. New York made me the artist I've become. It's no exaggeration to say that New York made me who I am today. But at the same time, I can't deny that the city wasn't perfect to me. Just as many of my dreams were shattered as they were fulfilled, probably more to be honest. The city's ambient stressors turned out to be bad for my health, and in working in the highest echelons of the media world, the inherent lie of the meritocracy was laid bare in front of me. I realized that no amount of success or money was making any of us any happier, and all of a sudden that twinkling painting on the far side of the water looked just like a shiny facade, held up by the blissful ignorance of the people around me. But if we're being honest, so was every other city in the end. No matter where I had chosen to move to fulfill my dreams, these realities would have come to light eventually. So then I ask, what better place to go through such a grim rite of passage? New York stripped me of everything I thought I knew about my creative self and forced me to rebuild one piece at a time. Had I not gone through the misery and the joy of calling this place home, my life would be a shadow of what it is today. But now New York is empty. Looking out at the buildings gutted from this horrible pandemic, knowing that hundreds of my peers are seeking safer waters as well, the skyline just isn't quite as bright as it used to be. And suddenly, no longer do I stand at the end of a rainbow at this final destination of opportunity and success. But now I can turn and look to the west and see the long roads before me splitting like the branches of an old tree. New York was never the end for me, but what I didn't realize was that it was actually just the beginning. So, like a dusty old cowboy, as I ride into the sunset, leaving this odd place behind for the time being, I feel warm knowing that I was able to call this place home for an entire chapter of my life. And when I return one day, when the plagues have passed, I can do so knowing that this place will always be a part of me. So goodbye, New York. Until we meet again.